Hey everyone, it's Matt here with Night Run Studio and welcome to another Let's Make a Tower Defense game in Unity. In the last video, we got our sprites imported and our project set up. This time around, we're going to get tile maps working so that we can start our world building. Let's get started. In the last video, we got all of our sprites set up except for our tile set. You can see here what mine looks like. It's just a bunch of tiles put together on a grid. So I'll just select my ground tiles at the bottom here, head over to the inspector where I can pick multiple for sprite mode, apply those changes, and then go into the sprite editor. Here we're just going to slice that image up. Mine is 32 by 32 grid, so we can click that. I'm going to keep empty racks because you'll notice there's some empty space here and I might want to add things later. Click slice and apply it. We can now close the sprite editor. Now, if you downloaded the Universal Render Pipeline version of Unity, you should be able to right-click in the hierarchy, go to 2D Object, Tile Map, and select Rectangular. When you do this, you'll notice that a grid and tile map appear. I'm just going to rename mine to be Ground. Now, if you didn't download those when you set up your project, not to worry. You can just go to Window, Package Manager. It'll start off by showing all of the packages currently in your project, but that's not very helpful, so let's go to the Unity Registry. From here we can search Tile, and then just click on Tile Map Editor. You should get a button at the bottom that allows you to download or install those, and then you should be good to go. Alright, so normally when you create your Tile Map Grid, you'll automatically have a Tile Palette pop up. For some reason mine doesn't seem to, which is a good chance for me to show you what to do if you lose your Tile Palette. So let's go up to the top, we're going to click Window, go down to 2D, Tile Palette. At the moment, it's a floating one, which you probably don't want because then it's easy to lose it. So I'm actually just going to, for the moment, dock mine just in the corner here, and we'll resize this later. But for now, what I'm going to do is where it says Create New Palette, I'm going to click that. And we're just going to name this one. Um, I'm just going to call mine Ground Tiles. And all of the other things on here, I don't worry about. You can hit Create. It's going to ask you where you want to actually save this. You probably don't want to save it in sprites as your sprite folder will fill up really, really quickly. So instead, within sprites, I'm going to create a new folder and just call this one tiles. All right, we've now created our palette so we can grab those ground tiles that we split up earlier. We can drag them over here and you'll notice a plus sign when you do. It's now going to ask where do you want to save all of those tiles and this is why we created the folder because this is going to make a lot of files and we don't want to suddenly add like a hundred files to your sprites folder. Instead we'll put them somewhere nice and clean like a tiles folder. All right with that done we now have our tiles on our palette and we're ready to get started. So first of all a couple things about the tile palette here. First you'll notice the active tile map is our ground one. Um, that's the only one we've created so this is nice and easy but later on you might have multiple tile maps for different layers so background things, foreground things, that sort of thing. You always want to make sure that you're painting in the correct tile map. Now at this point we've got a couple of tools and there's really just a few that we're going to be interested in for this video. The first one is going to be if you click on any of the tiles specifically you'll notice that it automatically will highlight your brush and you can just come into the game and start painting with that. Now obviously I don't want my tiles floating up in the sky like that so I'm going to click my eraser and I can get rid of them. And at this point just a couple of other little helpful things. You can paint multiple tiles at once so say I want to actually make a cliff over here at the side of my game. I can grab them all at once and click them in and I get the whole thing. Similarly, I could create, if I want to do a bunch of these tiles at once, I can start doing that. At this point, if I go into game, you'll notice that my tile palette is now showing up along with my cliff. Now again, for the moment, if I click on the ground here, you'll notice it's rendering in front of all of my other images, which is not really what I want. And so if I go to the, my tile map renderer, I'm just going to move this ground a little further back. So let's maybe put it at negative one. It's now in the background, which will allow me to do things like grab my tower, move it up, and also grab my other characters as well and move them up. Now you can play around with the size of your grid if you like. So for example, if I wanted to have a smaller grid tiles, I could go down to my grid cell size and make them 0.5 by 0.5 which would give me a much smaller grid to work with, and that might be a little more to your liking. Now, say I wanted to erase all of that because I don't like the way it is. You don't have to do this piece by piece. You can just actually grab a large amount of empty tiles, hit your eraser, and it will allow you to erase a lot all at once, then go back to your pencil. All right, now let's say that you want to add some different layers to your grid though. For example, I have these foreground objects here, like some rocks and cracks and things that maybe I want to put on my ground. What I could do is on my grid, I could go to 2D object and add another rectangular tile map. 
we call this one ground decoration, say. And I'm just going to set it one further forward than the other. So I set the last one at negative one, so I'll leave this at zero. Now when I grab these rocks, I want to make sure that I am actually on the ground decorations layer. And I can now put things down on top of my other tile in order to make it look a little more interesting if I want. You can do the same thing if you want to add background or foreground. So for example, say I wanted to put a, another hill, but I wanted it to be in the background so my player can run in front of it. I could go to, to the object, tile map rectangular. This time around, let's call this background. We'll set this to be like maybe negative two. And now if I wanted to, I could paint in some background objects, like making a hill or something like that. Now, just because I've made the background doesn't mean that my tile map will get set to that background. So make sure always that we are working in the correct layer. And at this point, if I wanted to, I could draw in some background things like like creating a little mountain or something in the background. I could also use my paint bucket fill tool to fill everything in the middle here so that I've now got a little bit of a hill and my player renders in front. You can click on game view and see that that's starting to look all right. All right, so that is how you use the tile map in Unity. In the next video, we're actually gonna get some things moving so that our game is starting to feel like an actual game. I'll see you in that video. In the meanwhile, if you found this helpful, please be sure to click like or subscribe to the channel. Until next time, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.